Hello everyone, welcome to the introduction to mechanical and industrial engineering course, make 130. This is the second video of the manufacturing. In this part, we are interested in explaining the different manufacturing procedures just to give you an overview about them. Also, we saw over the last video, we started by explaining what does it mean manufacturing, the difference between product and raw material. Also, we discussed the general classification of the manufacturing processes and we said that there are a set of group of manufacturing methods that can be grouped or classified as uh, shaping processes. Also, we do have the metal forming or, metal or forming processes and, then, uh, and the machining. Over this video, over the last video, we discussed the different shaping processes like casting. The most common two processes are the casting process and the uh, metal and the welding process. Uh, but over this video, we are going to discuss the metal forming in addition to the machining. So let us start with the metal forming. As we discussed over the last video, Metal forming or forming process, it should involve exposing the material into a very high force that would be needed to bring the material into the plastic zone or the plastic deformation. And the key condition here that we are producing or making a product by exposing the material into a force without melting the raw material. It means that there is no melting in that case since we are working over a metal forming or forming process. And in many of the cases of the metal forming process, the volume before the process or the manufacturing process will be preserved after the uh, manufacturing process. It means that the, for, the volume of the raw material after and before the uh, manufacturing process it is still the same. So in the metal forming, this is and this is basically what distinguishes the metal forming from the shaping. As we discussed, the shaping processes we have to melt the raw material first in order to make a product. But in the metal forming, that is fine if we can heat the raw material, but without melting the raw material, it should be still in the solid state. And we are going to exposing this expose this material into a very high force in order to bring it to the plastic deformation. As we discussed before. Oh, uh, previously over the previous videos that when we bring the material into plastic deformation we are going to change the shape of the material and this change will be permanent it means that we're going to end up with a permanent change in the material shape and this is the objective of the metal forming process so we can count that a metal forming process is is failed in case that we we couldn't able to achieve a plastic deformation of the material, or in other words, if we could be able to achieve a permanent change in the material shape. But if we can have enough big force that we are acting with this force on the material to make a plastic deformation and to achieve a permanent change in the material shape, in that case, we're going to have a successful metal forming process. Metal forming, it is lots of metal processes that can be grouped or classified as a metal forming, like the rolling process, the forging process, the extrusion, the drawing, and the sheet metal working. These are the most common types of metal forming. And again, as I mentioned, in the manufacturing processes class, you're going to go over these manufacturing methods and study their mechanics with more detail, but in another course. But here the objective is just to go over these different manufacturing methods and understand the difference between rolling, forging, extrusion, drawing, and sheet metal forming or sheet metal working processes. So starting with the drilling process. So it is from the name. It means that we are using drills, and this is the basic thing, this is the basic tool that we are using in this metal forming process, that we are using two rolls, and these two rolls are used to squeeze and decrease the thickness of a slab or a sheet or it is not a sheet, a plate of metal that is going to be squeezed between these two rolls. In the meanwhile, these two rolls are, are rotating to push the material to feed the material from the entry side to the exit side. So the material or the plate of the metal, it is enter, it enters the two rolls from this direction and it is squeezed between the two rolls. So there should be a very huge force or pressure acting by the two rolls over the sheet to squeeze it and decrease the thickness after the rolling process. So this is the main objective of any rolling process. The main objective is to it is used mainly for reducing the thickness of a plate using two rotating rolls. This is the basic idea or the fundamental thing of the rolling process. 
But another thing that you should understand that basically it is not necessarily just using the rolling process for decreasing the thickness of a plate, but basically we can use the rolling process in doing so many things. So even within the rolling process, there are so many different types of the rolling process. These things will be explained in detail, as I mentioned, in the manufacturing processes class, but the objective in this course is to understand what does it mean a rolling process. So simply, the rolling process, and also, as I discussed over the last video, don't stick to the word, but stick to the procedure. Understand the procedure. So when we mention a rolling process, you should understand there is a metal, one of the metal forming process, in which the material is not melted. The material is still in the solid state. And the material should be exposed into a very high compression or a very high rolling force that big enough to decrease the thickness of the plate from a certain value to a lower value. So as you can see, it enters here with a certain velocity and a certain thickness. So T0, this is start or indicate the initial thickness of this plate. After rolling, the rolls are rotating and this rotation of the rolls is going to grab the plate and squeeze the blade between the two rolls and reject the blade or eject the blade from the other side with the lower thickness as T final. So T final, this is the final thickness after rolling process. It should be lower than the thickness of the slab after the, before the rolling process. Definitely send the volume before, this is the volume of the slab before rolling, it should equal to the volume of the same slab or plate after rolling, since the volume is preserved. So as long as the thickness decreases, it means that the width and the length of the plate should be increasing. To compensate the reduction, the reduction in the thickness that has been achieved by the rolling process itself. So within the rolling process, this is the main objective, as I mentioned, to decrease the thickness. What's going to happen to the length and the width? The other two dimensions of the plate, they are going to expand. They are going to increase up on decreasing the thickness of the plate. And this is the fundamental thing of the rolling process. But as I mentioned, it is not just decreasing the thickness. We are using the rolling process in so many different things. Even we could use it for making the screws. These bolts and screws are one of the methods of making them is using rolling process. So we are using rolling in so many things. One of these things definitely is the uh, decreasing, this is the fundamental thing, decreasing the thickness of a plate. But as I mentioned, there are lots of other rolling process that can be included as or classified as rolling process as one of the metal forming processes. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to let you with this video that explain the different types of rolling processes just for your information. But again, we are going, you are going to study these other rolling processes with more detail and their mechanics in the other courses like the manufacturing process. Make sense? Steel is highly resistant to shaping when it's cold, and for that reason, it is generally rolled whilst it's hot. To make sure the steel is at the correct temperature for rolling, it is fed into a furnace. Here it travels through several temperature control zones until it's at the correct temperature and ready for rolling. Whatever the product, the principles of hot rolling are the same. Steel is squeezed between rolls until the final thickness and shape are achieved. To do this, the rolls must exert forces of tens of millions of newtons, equivalent to a weight of thousands of tons. The rolls, therefore, run in massive bearings mounted in housings of enormous strength and driven by powerful electric motors. These are known as mill stands. The layout of a rolling mill can vary from a simple single stand mill to several stands positioned either side by side or in a line. The mill rolls themselves can either be plain for flat products such as strip, used for products such as cladding, or profiled for sections, beams and columns for use in construction. Mill stands have various roll arrangements depending on the product being rolled. The simplest arrangement is a two-high stand, used mainly for long products such as sections. 
For light sections and bars, three high stands are sometimes used, with the steel passing one way through the bottom gap and back through the top gap. Four high stands have two work rolls in contact with the steel, supported by larger backup rolls to prevent distortion caused by the rolling face. These give greater accuracy for rolling flat products, such as plate. Universal beam mills include stands with both horizontal and vertical rolls bearing on the steel simultaneously. The rolled steel is then cooled in a way appropriate to its end use and prepared for further processing or dispatch. Second metal forming process here is the forge, forging process. Forging it is as I'm pretty sure that you have an idea about this process and you have seen this, this guy who is already hammering over this very heated metal but as you can see this metal piece it is still in the solid state. It is just heated to make it easy for him so he can able to shape or form, to be more accurate, form this metal into another form by exposing the material into this very hammering force. So he's using hammers and he hitting a lot over the material with the aim of it changing the shape. So this is the basic idea of the forging process. It is the process of exposing the material into a very high compressive force with the aim of changing its shape. And again, the change of the shape, it should be permanent change because we have to bring the material into the plastic deformation. So this is, for example, is as hand forging. This is what these guys are doing by hand. But in the meanwhile, in the big factories and industries of the forging processes, that depend on the forging process, we are using machines, we are using dies, or we are using these special tools which are known as the forging die. This die, it is a huge thing that is going to produce a very high force, and this force is gonna be big enough to squeeze a metal that it, in many of the cases it's gonna be heated. Heating the metal is gonna make it easy for us. Increasing the temperature of the metal, it's going to make it easy to form and change the shape of this metal in case that we decide, in comparison, in case that we decided to work at the room temperature without heating. So if you have a piece of metal and you find it difficult for you to change the shape of this bit of metal, the easiest way is just first, go ahead and heat it. And then you can, you're going to use some hammers and these things and you are, can, in that case, you can be able to change the shape of this metal to the shape that you want. And in that case, if you have done this, this it means that you have done the forging process. As I should said, in the big industries, we are using these special tools. This thing is known as die. This die is known as the forging die. This die has a shape special shape and this shape will be imparted or reflected over the piece of metal. This piece of metal initially it comes like a cubic shape and it could be heated as I mentioned. Then we set this thing inside between the two halves. These are the two parts of the die. They are movable. One of them is fixed. The one on the top here is moving. So this one initially it was on the top away from the piece. Then we're going to keep on pressing the material steadily step by step till it will be completely squeezed between the two halves or the two parts of the die. And the shape of the die will be imparted or reflected over the work piece. Then once we we open the die one more time, we can get the product at the end. So this is the basic idea of the forging process. And again, very similar to the rolling process. It is not just this thing. We have so many different types of forging processes that can be grouped as a forging process. They are sharing the same concept that we are exposing the material into a very high force. And this force is big enough to change the shape of the material. Make sense? So to explain to you further what does it mean a forging process and to understand the other different forging processes, I'm gonna let you with this as other video. So this is one of the forging operation as you can see. This is the pellet, this is the raw material after we got it from the furnace. We're gonna put it in a furnace at a certain very high temperature, so it is very hot, and we just fix it, it's a huge thing, and we're just fixing it between two movable dies. So this is open die forging. This bunch or this die is movable, the other one 
underneath here it is fixed there is a station that is not moving and this one applies a very very huge force acting over this pellet to squeeze it so as we push it down the height is going to decrease and accordingly the diameter is going to increase so it become more wider because we have to keep the volume fixed But by the way, the things that are already broken over the surface, as you can see, there are lots of cracks. These are not cracks over the material. These are the oxid layers. There is oxygen in the environment. And since this metal it is very hot at very high temperature, so it would be easy. And this is a metal. So it would be easy for the oxygen to have a chemical reaction with the metal to form an oxid layer. This oxid layer, we, we don't need it. And in many of the cases, it will be automatically removed during the manufacturing processes. So they break down these things that break down this are not the metal itself over the surface as much as this is the oxide layer. And this indicates how easy is oxygen can be formed or have a chemical reaction with the metal up on heating the metal during this forging. So as you can see, this is over over this process here. The the metal part it is or this product it is not just done by one forging operation. No, it goes through a procedure. It goes through multiple forging operations. So we're gonna end up with a final product at the end. So the next one is known as ring rolling. This is one of the rolling operation, not a forging operation. But here, this ring rolling operation that it will be seen here. This operation is used for enlarging the diameter of this ring, used just to make a ring. Yeah, so this is the over the screen over the machine that the operator is gonna monitor and see everything and observe what's going on in the material and the temperature. This operation is known as ring rolling operation. This is one of the rolling operation, not a forging operation. This is one of the rolling operation that before this one. This is also another forging operation that is different. The previous ones that already shown in the video that we were squeezing the material steadily, like we are, we are applying the force steadily and keep on pressing step by step. But here, this is hammering force. So it is a sudden force by hammering over the material. This gives more force 
over the gradually applied force. This is the same concept as the impact force that we explained over the previous videos. process of metal forming that we have here is the extrusion process. Extrusion, as again, don't stick to the word, stick to the procedure, understand the procedure, the idea, the concept, the operating principle of this process. So the, in the extrusion process, this, in this process we are compressing the material to flow or to reject it or project it through an opening known as die at the end of a container with a certain shape and then you're gonna end up with a product. It is just to understand the concept of the extrusion process, I have brought to you this animation, but remember that this is not an extrusion process. This is not the process that we are talking about. This is just to understand what does it mean extrusion, but extrusion is this thing. In the extrusion process, we are going to have the work piece, the work part that in many of the cases comes in the cylindrical form as a cylinder, and since it is metal and it could be difficult for us to uh, form this material, it's going to be much more better in many of the cases to heat it, to heat this material into a high temperature, but still it should be still in the solid state. Then we're going to put it inside a container. At the end of the container, we're going to fix a die. So this die, this is th something at the end of the container. The container has one opening from one side and has another orifice or opening from the other side. At the end of the container, we are fixing a die. This thing, this is the die, and this is the other half and the other part of the die. And we are pouring the metal inside, then there is a press. There is a piston that we gonna compress and apply a very high compression over this metal, 
Because of the force, the only thing for the metal to be projected or to be rejected out of the opening or the container is through the opening of the die itself. So this bar that is, has been rejected is known as the extrudate or the extruded bar. This is the product. So this is the raw material before extrusion and this is how it's gonna look like after extrusion. And the shape of the final product after extrusion or the extruded bar depends on the shape of the orifice of the die itself. So it is very similar to the ground beef like or the ground meat like this grinding process, this is how we grind the meat to make it small pieces. It is very similar, like this motor here has something inside that is gonna keep on pushing. This meat and the meat is, will be rejected or projected from the other side because of the push inside this container. So this thing, this is the container and we're adding here the meat and we're gonna keep pushing the meat from to be rejected and, and extruded from the other part. So this is the extrudate, this is the product, this is the thing that is going to be obtained up on the extrusion process. So the extrusion process is very similar to the ground beef thing, but as I said, this is not counted as an extrusion process. This meat thing is not counted as extrusion, but here we are talking extrusion as metal. So in the extrusion process, it is the process of compressing the material to flow through an opening Known as the die, this opening has, it is formed by a die that is fixed at the end of the container with a certain shape and upon applying this high pressure, you're gonna end up with a product. This is the basic idea of the extrusion process. Make sense? The next pr process is the drawing process. Drawing is very similar, almost has the same concept as the extrusion, but the difference between extrusion and drawing is that in extrusion, we have to apply a compression. We have to push the material to be ejected, to be rejected from the other side, to be extruded from the other side. This is in the extrusion process. But in the drawing, we are using a die that is fixed at the end of a container. We are bringing a material after heating it and putting in this material inside the container, the same thing as we do for the extrusion, typically the same. But instead of pushing the material from this side, we are drawing. We are pulling the material to be extruded or to be drawn out of a die. This is the basic idea of the drawing process. So the difference, the essential difference between drawing process, the drawing process, and the extrusion process is in extrusion we are pushing the material to be ejected from other end of from the die from in the other side, but in the drawing process, we are drawing the material, we are pulling the material in the same direction as it should be rejected or extracted from the die to end up with that product with the same purpose, with the same aim. Mainly we are using it with the aim of decreasing the diameter. So it comes with an initial diameter D0, which is a bigger diameter. And after that, after the drawing process, the diameter is going to decrease to D final and definitely as the diameter, the, the diameter decreases, the length of this wire is going to increase. So this is the main difference between extrusion and drawing. Again, in extrusion, we are pushing the material to end up with a product, but here we are stretching the material or drawing the material, pulling the material from a die to end up with a product. Make sense? So to give you more detail about the wire drawing, because the drawing process, the most, it is mainly used for making wires. Whatever the wire that used for steel that we are using for constructions, or it could be used for for wire making. All the electrical wires are made by this drawing process. So I'm gonna let you with these two videos that explain the concept of the wire drawing or the wire making. I'm talking about wire, whatever it is, steel wire or electrical wire that use for all the electrical and conductors. So this wire making, as I mentioned, it depends on the drawing process depend on the same concept that there is a wire that comes with an initial diameter D0 and then we are going to draw this wire through a die with this aim of decreasing its diameter. So this is the basic concept of the wire making based on the drawing process. So I'm gonna let you with these two videos that explain this drawing process for wire making. After removal of the iron oxide layer, the wire is lubricated. 
A powered capstan draws it through a die, reducing the diameter. Further reduction can take place using extra dies. The drawn wire is finally wound on a spool. This transformation elongates the wire. One meter of 5.5 millimeter wire rod can be drawn to 30 meters with one millimeter diameter, or 484 meters with 0.25 millimeters diameter. The process increases the tensile and yield strength while reducing ductility. So this machine has like, this is, there is like one stand for a die is already inside this box. There is another die here, another die here. And the wire is gonna keep on or follow a procedure of reduction of the diameter. Like the diameter over this die, the diameter will be decreasing and here it will be decreasing farther and farther and so on. So this like multiple, multiple stands of different dies with different further reductions of the wire. So the wire comes from a spool that is already fixed at the end here, and it comes with large diameter over this one, and it can keep on decreasing, it will be smaller and collected over the other side. So this is the basic idea of this uh, wire making machine. The last thing here or type of metal forming process is metal, uh, sheet metal forming or sheet metal working. So the sheet metal working, it is not just one process. It is like a group of processes, like the drawing, like the extrusion. So these types of processes, they are, there are lots of other extrusion processes and there are lots of other drawing processes. The same th thing for the sheet metal working. Sheet metal working, it is a set. It is not just one process. It is a set of processes that used to shear, bend or draw sheet metals into different products and different shapes. It involves three main processes, shearing, bending and drawing, and you should understand the difference between these three types of sheet, sheet metal working processes that can be done over sheet metals. So, let us discuss what is a sheet. Sheet metal, it means that this met, that you have a sheet and this sheet is made of metal. Like for example, you may have a sheet of plastic, a sheet of any other material, but here we are talking about the sheet metal. This sheet metal working, it is a huge industry that is used in everything in our life. For example, if you're gonna talk about the body of your car, it is made of sheet metal. It has a certain feature, it has special bends, it has been specially designed to give the shape and allow for the easy flow of your vehicle while you're driving over the road. These details of the entire body of the, your car, it is sheet metal working. It has been done by a sheet metal working. So the body of the car itself it is made of sheet. Sheet of metal made of a certain metallic material, a sheet made of a certain metallic material. A sheet metal, it is mainly having is any sheet with a thickness less than or equal six millimeter. If the thickness, it is lower than or equal. If the thickness, it is lower than or equal. Six millimeter, it means that this will be classified as a sheet metal. And we have to use any one of these sheet metal working processes in order to shape this sheet. But if you do have a material that is bulk, bulk it means that the thickness in many of the cases is most likely to be bigger than six millimeter thickness. In that case, it's gonna be counted as a bulk process and you have to use one of these, either drawing, extrusion, forging, or, roll or rolling in order to form this metal material that is bulky. Bulk it means that it has a thickness bigger than, it get that it is split with a thickness bigger than six millimeter, you have to use the rolling process, for example, in order to shape or form this material. But in case that you do have the thickness of the plate, it is less than or equal six millimeter, it can be counted as a sheet metal, uh, sheet metal, and in that case, you can use one of the sheet metal working processes, like bending, shearing, or drawing. Make sense? So the sheet metal working, it is the process that is used to shear 
or bend shear it means that you're gonna cut like you do have a, a sheet of metal and then you're gonna use like a scissor to cut this piece of sheet like you do have a paper and you're gonna use two, uh, the scissor to cut the paper so this cutting action is known as shearing. So this is a shearing process. This is simply how we can, one of the ways in order to shape and to make a product from a sheet, definitely one of the things probably you could be needed or required to cut the sheet. Cutting the sheet is known as shearing process. It's known as shearing or cutting process, like this thing. Like, for example, if we decided to use this special tool, which are die, so this thing is known as bunch. This bunch is movable, moves down with a very high force, and this is a fixed die. And this is the sheet metal, the piece of sheet that is made of metal, and this bunch moves vertical. And the clearance or the distance between this line of the die and this surface of the bunch, it is the, there is a very, very small distance between them that allows as the clearance of the bunch with respect to the die, the movement of the bunch with respect to the die. Once the bunch moves down, it's going to cut the sheet into two pieces, separate or cut the sheet into two pieces. This process is known as shearing process. This is one of the things that we probably could need to do over any sheet piece or any piece of sheet metal. The other process is bending. Bending it means that you're gonna have a piece of sheet or a sheet metal that is straight, then for some reason you would like to bend it into a certain shape. So this require a process known as a bending process. So this sheet has been bended into V shape. Initially, before bending, it was straight. It was perfectly straight. Then we're gonna have this bunch. This bunch is gonna move down, gonna keep on squeezing and bending this sheet into this V-shaped die. So the die has a V-shape. The bunch also has a V-shape. This is gonna end up with forming this sheet into a V-shape. And that way, this process is known as a bending process. The third process is the, is the drawing process, or known as deep drawing process. This deep drawing or drawing process mainly used for making cups. For example, let us assume that you do have a, a, a cup that is made of sheet metal. In that way, this cup, it is empty. There is a cavity, interior cavity, or something empty inside. It is like a cavity inside this cup, just a cup. So this cup initially, it comes like a circular blank sheet. It comes in that way, like this is a blank sheet, which is a circular disc of sheet. And then we are fixing this thing over the die. And then we are moving the bunch, which has this curved surface, right? And moving this bunch with a certain speed and force. And, and once this bunch is gonna be moved in over this blank sheet, which is a circular, after bunching and after doing the drawing process, is gonna we gonna this sheet this sheet will be formed and shaped into a cup form. It's gonna take the same form of the die and the and the bunch in that way, and this is gonna be the final product. This process is known as a drawing process. So all of these things are different operations and different things and it changes over the shape of a sheet metal that we can use, do using these different bunches and dies. In all of these things, we should have a bunch and a die. Bunch and die. The thing that moves it is the bunch. The thing that is fixed is known as a die. And this bunch and die, they do have specific shape and they are especially designed together, this known as sheet metal warming, uh, uh, stamping die. So this thing is known as, this is the name of the tool. This is a special tool that is designed in order to cut, like shearing, or do bending or drawing to any sheet metal working. And again, the sheet metal working is one of the metal forming processes. Make sense? So again, it is a set of processes that is used to shear, bend, or draw sheet metals in or, uh, into different shapes. It involves three main types of processes, shearing, bending, and drawing. I'm gonna let you with this video that explain in detail or more different types of uh, sheet metal forming. So you're gonna understand further what does it mean, bending, drawing, and shearing. 
through this video. So I'm gonna let you with this video for more details. Multiple operations may be carried out on sheet metal stock either at a single die station or at multiple stations within a single stroke of the press. Dies used in single station operations can be either compound dies or combination dies. Compound dies are press tools in which only cutting operations are done, usually blanking and hole punching. Combination dies are press tools in which a cutting operation, usually blanking, is combined with shaping or forming operations. Multiple station operations are done with dies that have several stations. Each station simultaneously performs a single step in a series of operations needed to complete a part. Finished work pieces are discharged with each stroke. Multiple station operations can be performed using either progressive dies or transfer dies. In progressive die operations, parts are made from continuous coil stock and remain connected to the stock by a carrier strip during each successive operation until the final cutoff and discharge from the die. In transfer die operations, parts are blanked before or at the beginning of the sequential operations. Mechanical transfer devices grip and move the individual work pieces from die station to die station within a single die to complete a progression of operations. With large work pieces, a tandem press line may be utilized. Parts are transferred by gripping devices from press to press instead of within a single die. Each press within the tandem line holds its own tooling and performs specific operations to form, trim, and pierce the part. Now let us move to the third group or category of manufacturing processes, which is machining operations or machining processes. We said that the manufacturing operations can be grouped into three categories. We do have shaving, like casting and welding that have been covered over the last video. We do have metal forming, like the rolling, forging, extrusion, drawing, and sheet metal working. And the third group, which is machining. What makes machining different than the other two categories is that there is a loss in the, in the, uh, or a reduction in the volume of the raw material. Like the raw material, there is something that it would be removed from the material in the form of a chip in order to perform a machining operation. In the shaping process, we have to melt the raw material in order to end up with a product. In the metal forming, the volume is preserved. We are exposing the material into a very high force while the material it should be in the solid state in order to change the shape of the material. And in the, in the metal forming, the volume before metal forming and after, it is still preserved, it is still the, the same volume. There is no change over the volume of the material up on the metal forming process. But in the machining operation, the volume is going to re be reduced in the form of a chip because as a condition to have a successful machining operation, a part of the material should be cut, should be removed in the form of a chip in order to perform a, 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 metal, a, a machining operation. So over this part, we are going to discuss the different machining operation, the most common ones like the turning operation, the drilling operation, the shaping, milling, and the grinding operations. Make sense? All right, so what are the things that you should know about these different manufacturing operations? Basically, the objective over this course is just to understand the difference between them. The difference in terms of the machine that is used in terms of the operating operation. Since we mentioned a machine, why we got the name of these operations as machining operations? Because they are depend on machine tools. These tools are known as, or these special machines are known as machine tools on machines. So that's why we got the name of these operations as machining operations. So in the machining operation, 
Why we got the name? Because we are using machines, but we don't care about the name of the operation, but we care about the objective and the, the procedure. During the machining, any, any one of these machining operations, whatever it is, turning, drilling, shaping, grinding, milling, all of them, the common between them that there should be a reduction in the volume of the raw material in the form of a chip. We have to form and obtain a chip. If there is no chip, it's going to be formed, it means that we don't have a machining operation. Make sense? So what exactly the thing that we should know about these different operations is to understand the difference between them in terms of the machine. What type of machine? What, what is the name of the machine that is used in performing the turning operation? What is the name of the machine that is used in the drilling operation? What is the name of the machine that is used for the shaping operation? The same thing for milling. The same thing for the grinding operation. So this is one thing that you should know about this operation. What is the name of the machine? Another thing to understand the operating principle of every one of these machining operations. What is the operating principle of the turning operation, the drilling, the shaping, the milling, and so on. So what does it mean an operating principle? To describe the operating principle of any one of these machining processes, you should mention how the cutting motion, how the cutting motion is performed, how is the feed motion is performed within this operation. So again, to describe, to describe the operating principle of any one of these manufacturing operations, you have to describe two things. How the cutting motion is done, how the feed motion is done. So the question is, what does it mean the cutting motion? What does it mean the feed motion? Cutting motion, this is the process that is needed in for, for, to form a chip. This is an essential motion that is needed to form a chip. This is the cutting motion. What is the feed motion? This is the motion of the tool or the machine that is needed, that is needed in order to keep the machine, keep on performing, uh, performing the machining operation or keep on producing new chip. For example, as in the turning operation, as in the turning operation, these little things that already removed from the material, these are the chip that I'm talking about. These are the things that will be removed up on the turning operation or the machining operation. So in order to have a successful machining operation, as I mentioned, we have to form this chip. To form this chip, the machine should do two motions. One is known as cutting motion. The second one is known as the feed motion. So uh, when you will be asked to describe the operating principle of any one of these machining operations, you have to mention how the cutting motion is done, how the feed motion is done. And I'm gonna explain in detail what does it mean the cutting motion and the feed motion with more detail. And this it could be easy understood if we started by the drilling operation. Let us start with the drilling operation so you can understand more what does it mean cutting motion, what does it mean feed motion. The drilling operation from the name, it is the process that is used for making holes by rotating a twisted drill. So another thing that you should know about every one of these machining operations is the name of the machine and the name of the tool that is used in addition what is the operating principle, how the cutting motion and feed motion are done. Make sense? So these four things, when you, are, uh, when, when you will be asked to describe any one of these machining operations, you have to mention the four things. What is the name of the machine? What is the name of the tool? What is the operating principle as cutting motion, how it is done, and the feed motion, how it is done. Make sense? So, the drilling operation, it is the process of making holes. This is the process, this is the objective of the operation. Why you are making drilling? For making holes. What is the tool that is going to be used for making holes? It is the twisted drill. And how it is done? It's done by feeding the tool into a work piece. WB stands for work part or work piece. This is the piece or the metal that it will be open, that you are going to open or form a hole or machine a hole inside this tool, inside this work part. The name of the machine is known as drilling press machine. So the name of the tool it is twisted drill. The name of the machine it is drilling press machine. It is known as drilling press. 
or directly drilling machine or directly, uh, it is very common uh, the common thing it is drilling press so the name of the machine it is drilling press machine the name of the tool it is twist to drill and the objective of this drilling operation is making holes into metal work parts how it is how it is done this is the operating principle how this machine can form a hole into a work part this is the operating principle to describe it you have to mention how the cutting motion is done how the feed motion is done this is the shape of this is a typical example of one of the drilling press machines this is the machine that is used in the drilling but this is not the only one there are lots of different versions and shapes of the drilling press that using different that are doing different types of drilling operations but the main objective of the drilling operation is just making hole and this is one of the machines that can be used for this purpose this is the shape of the tool which is known as the twist drill it is kind of twisted this twisted drill as you can see it has like kind of helix thing so that's why we got the name as twisted drill twisted drill or you can simply mention drill so if you just say drill this indicate that this is the tool that is used for making for drilling or making holes make sense this is the work part so how about the cutting motion and feed motion this is very similar this drilling operation is known is very similar to the driller to the drill machine that you are using at home to open a hole in a wall. When you are required to use the driller to open a hole into the wall, what you're gonna do? First, you have to turn, you have to connect it to the electricity and you have to press on, uh, to press to turn the drill. It means that you have to operate the machine to, to, to rotate the drill. So the drill is gonna keep on rotating. The rotation of the drill, this is the cutting motion why the rotation of the drill why the rotation of this thing is counted as the cutting motion because of this drill if it didn't rotate there is no hole is going to be open so this is an essential motion that is needed in order to perform uh, or to open or to perform this operation or to open the hole into a work part very similar to the driller that you are using for making a hole into the wall you have to turn the, you have to connect it to the electricity first and you have to turn the drill and you have to keep in pressing. So the rotation of the drill, this is the cutting motion. Then you have to keep on pressing over the wall steadily, easy, step by step to open the hole into the wall. So the motion, there is another motion, the motion that you are pressing against the wall that you are penetrating the drill into the wall, this vertical motion or this motion perpendicular to the surface of the wall is known as the feed motion. So these are the two motions that you have to achieve in order to open a hole into the wall. First, the twist drill should be rotating. So this is the cutting motion. So the rotation of the twist drill, it is the cutting motion, the second motion is known as the feed motion. What is the feed motion? That you have to keep on pressing and pushing the twisted drill to penetrate inside the wall to open the hole. This motion is known as the feed motion. You have to keep on feeding to open the hole. So this assembly, what does it mean? The cutting motion and the feed motion in the twisted drill. So when you are required to describe the operating principle, of the drilling operation, you have to mention that the in the drilling operation, the rotation of the twisted drill is known as the cutting motion. It is named here, it is not accurate, it should be like the cutting motion. So the cutting motion comes by the rotation of the twisted drill and the feed motion comes by the motion of the twisted drill perpendicular to the work B surface. You have to feed to allow the twisted drill to penetrate into the work piece to open the hole. So these are the two motions that describe the operating principle of the twisted drill. The cutting motion and the feed motion. Make sense? So these are the four things that you should understand for every single manufacturing operation. What is the name of the machine? It is drilling breast machine. What is the name of the tool? It is twisted drill. How the cutting motion and the feed motion are done? The cutting motion is done by the rotation 
of the twisted gel. And the feed motion is done by moving the twisted gel vertical, perpendicular to the workpiece surface to open the hole. What is the main objective of the drilling operation? It is mainly used for making holes into work metal parts. Make sense? So this is the basic idea of the drilling operation. A similar to the drilling operation is the turning operation. It is one of the other machining operation. The turning operation uses a machine. The name of the machine is known as the lathe machine. So this is the name of the machine, lathe machine, which is this thing. This is a typical schematic that represents the shape of a lathe machine. This machine, it is a very common machine that used for any machining operation. This is one of the fundamental machining operation, which is the turning operation using this lathe machine. This lathe machine has many parts. This part here is known as the head stock. This is known as the head stock. <coughs> Inside this head stock, and this is the thing that you're gonna see in the lab when you're gonna go there. When inside this head stock, you're gonna find lots of gear. This is the gear box of this machine. And these gears are connected to this thing known as the spindle. So this thing that rotates is known as the spindle of this machine. This spindle has a shock that is already used for fixing the metal part. So the work piece is the thing, this blue thing, this is the work part or the work piece that is going to be fixed into this spindle. And once we switch on the engine or switch on the machine, the spindle is going to rotate to give rotation to the work part as are shown here in this animation. This thing, this yellow part is known as the carriage. This thing is known as the carriage. This carriage is movable over something here that is named as lead screw. This is known as the lead screw. This is just for your information and this definitely will be explained to you when you visit the lab. Over the lead screw, this carriage is moving over the lead screw parallel to the axis of the work part as shown here. This thing at the end is known as the tail stock. This is known as the tail stock. It is fixed at the other end just to hold the work part in, over, over the other end from the other end while one end is already fixed inside this spindle. So as I mentioned was once we switch on the engine, the machine, the spindle is going to rotate to give rotation to the work part. The rotation of the work part, this is the cutting motion. Here we are explaining the operating principle. How the operating principle of the turning operation is done. The cutting motion is done by the rotation of the work bar that is fixed inside this spindle of the machine. So once we switch on the engine or the machine, the spindle is going to rotate, the work bar is going to rotate, this is the cutting motion. How about the feed motion? The tool of, this is the tool, this is the shape of the tool is known as a single point cutting tool, is known as single point cutting tool. This tool has a very sharp point. It has a point, it cuts with a point, not an edge even. It's just a very small point. This is like a special tool, has this very small point that already very sharp. And once this point is, is pressed against the work piece that rotates, a shape is going to be forming. A part of the metal that will be removed is known as the chip. When this chip is forming, this indicates that we do have a successful turning operation. So how about the feed motion? The feed motion comes from the motion of the carriage parallel to the axis of the work part. The tool is fixed on the top of the carriage and the carriage moves horizontal, parallel to the axis of the work part, and as it moves, there is a chip that is going to be removed. Because of the very sharp point that is pressed against the work part to remove a chip. This horizontal movement, parallel to the axis, this is known as the feed motion. So how the cutting motion is performing in the turning operation? The cutting motion is performing by rotating the work part that is going to be fixed in the spindle of the machine. And once the spindle rotates, this will achieve the cutting motion. How the feed motion is performed? The tool. The feed motion is performed by the tool, but the cutting motion is performed by the work part.
over the turning operation that is fixed over the spindle, but the feed motion is performed by the tool that is fixed over the carriage, and this carriage moves parallel to the workpiece surface to perform the feed operation or the feed motion. So this is schematic, this representation represents how the cutting motion and the feed motion is done. The rotation of the work part, this is the cutting motion, this rotation, this is the cutting motion, and the, move, the motion or the movement of the tool parallel to the workpiece axis, this is the workpiece axis, and this is the tool that moves parallel to the axis. This motion is known as the feed motion. So when you will be asked to describe the operating principle of a turning operation, it is quite enough if you can draw this thing, this shape, this is schematic, and indicate the rotation of the work part. It is the cutting motion, while the motion of the, the movement of the tool barrel to the workpiece axis, this is gonna give us the feed motion of within the turning operation. So these are the things that you should understand, and there are lots of other things that definitely will be explained to you when you study the manufacturing processes class about the, uh, the turning operation. But the thing that you should understand that the turning operation is the process that is used in obtaining cylindrical parts this is the main objective of the turning operation. It is used for making cylindrical objects or parts by rotating the work piece or the work part against a movable cutting tool. So the cutting tool or the cutting edge or the cutting point, single point cutting tool, which is this tool, it is movable parallel to the work piece surf, uh, uh, axis and the work part is, part is rotating in order to obtain a cylindrical part, this is within the turning operation. Make sense? And again, the condition is to form a chip in order to perform a turning operation. This is the chip. This, do you see this thing that moves inside the flutes? These things are known as the flutes. These flutes in the twister drill are especially designed in order to allow for the easy removal of the chip. So this thing that comes from the hole, as you open the hole, in the wall or in a metal part, there are things that are rejected, that comes from the twisted drill. These things, these are the chips that we are talking, this is the chip that we are talking about. If there is no chip, there is no machining operation. This is the condition. So that's why in the machining operation, there is a part of the metal that it will be removed in the form of a chip and the volume will be decreased. This is the condition of any machining operation. Make sense? One of the other machining operations is the shaping process, but don't be confused between the shaping here, which is one of the machining operation and the shaping as a category of the manufacturing processes. We said that all the manufacturing processes can be grouped into three main categories, shaping, like casting, welding, and these things, and forming and machining. One of the machining operation is a shaping process. The shaping process uses a machine known as the shaper machine. But there are other versions of this shaper like Brenner and Slutters. They are doing the same concept. But for now, just to know, when you will be asking about what is the name of the machine that is used for the machining of the shaping process, the name of the machine is known as shaper machine. This shaper uses a special mechanism. This mechanism is, is known as the quick return mechanism. It's known as the quick return mechanism and there is one of these courses that you are going to study which is the kinematics and kinetics of mechanisms. Definitely you're gonna study the kinematics and kinetics of this mechanism that is used in the shaper machine. Shapers, as I mentioned, they mainly depend on this quick return mechanism which is this thing, it has this slot and this bend that keyboard rotating and this mechanism is before here, this link, that gonna keep on pushing and moving this thing. This thing on the top is known as the ram. This is the ram of the shaper. At the end of the ram, we are fixing the tool. This thing here, this is the tool that is already cutting into the work piece. So this black thing, this is the work part that it will be cut. And this, this is the tool that it takes this shape, this form, and this tool has a sharp edge. As it moves forward, it move, it removes things. This thing that is removed, this is the chip. 
So since there is a chip that is going to be produced, this type of process, it will be grouped as machining operation. So it is a machining operation. So as the tools move forward, it remove a chip, then it return without any removal of the chip. Then it moves forward again and return back. So this type of motion is known as the reciprocal motion. It moves forward, remove a chip and return, then remove and return remove and return and keep on doing so till you finish the work be surface entirely. This is the fundamental thing of the shaper or the shaping operation. How we can achieve this reciprocal motion? This requires a special mechanism. This mechanism is known as the quick return mechanism. Make sense? This thing that moves is known as RAM. This RAM is fixed over a slide that moves that allowed for the easy move forward and backward or forth and back motion of this ram. At the end of the ram, we are fixing a tool in something that we call as tool post. This tool is fixed on the front of the ram. It, it has an edge as it may, as, as the ram push the tool forward, it's gonna remove a chip and then it will return without any chip removal and add, repeat the process till we finish the surface. This is the basic idea of the shaping operation. So it is the process that is used mainly for making surfaces by reciprocally moving a tool, by the reciprocal movement of a tool, the tool move forth and back, this reciprocal motion, repeated motion, with a cutting edge, the tool should have a cutting edge which should be sharp enough and strong enough to cut over the work be surface to produce a chip. This is the basic idea of the shaping operation and the name of the machine that is used, it is shaper. The name of the tool, it is the shaper tool or like the cutting tool in the shaper machine, which is just a cutting tool. It is just named as a cutting tool. So this is the uh, name of the tool in the shaping operation. But as I said, there are some other versions to this machine like planer and slaughter. They are almost using the same concept but the operating principle is slightly different, right? So this is for the objective of the machining operation and this is the name of the machine itself. But the question is, how, what is the operating principle of the shaping operation? How the cutting motion is done or performed, how the feed motion is performed. The cutting motion is performed by the reciprocal motion of the tool. This tool is gonna keep on moving forth and back, forth and back over this schematic. So this movement of the tool, this reciprocal motion, this is the cutting motion in the shaping operation. This is the cutting motion. So it cuts, as it moves forward, it cuts, cuts and remove a piece of the metal. This is the chip that I'm talking about. Then how about the feed motion? As you can see, the tool is not moving in the lateral direction, in the cross direction, the, move, the tool moves forth and back, forth and back. It doesn't move this direction. It moves only over this forth and back direction, over this direction. But the work piece, which is fixed over a vice here, forget about the fixation of the tool. This tool, it can be pushed to the left, I'm sorry, to the right, in order to feed, in order to bring new material in front of the tool, to be cut, for example, this tool as it moves moves in this direction, there is a piece of the metal, all of this line or surface of the metal will be removed in front of the tool as it keep on moving forward, right? Then the tool will return without any cutting. How about if we didn't move this work piece, the tool it will have the same bass one more time, but in that case, it will, it's gonna take the same line, it's gonna move over the same path one more time, but in that case, there is no chip will be removed. Why? Because we already removed the chip from the previous path. So we have to push the material into this direction, into this right direction, to bring new material that hasn't been removed yet in front of the tool, and once the tool moves forward, it's gonna keep on removing the chip. So this is how it works. Like the tool moves forth and back, then we push the work piece, slightly push the work piece to the left or to the right. 
So this lateral displacement, this lateral movement, this is longitudinal. This is the movement in the longitudinal direction. This is the movement in the lateral direction or the transverse direction or the normal direction. This movement, this is the feed motion, how it is done by the machining or the shipping operation. So as the tool moves forward, it removes a chip return without any chip removal. Then we push the work piece. Then remove a return and push the work piece. Remove a return and push. So the pushing in the lateral direction, this is the feed motion, how it is done by the shaping operation. So this is the operating principle of the shaper machine or the shaping operation that the reciprocal motion, the cutting motion comes from the tool that the tool moves reciprocally, like the reciprocal motion of the tool, this achieves the cutting motion. And the lateral movement of the work piece, this achieves the feed motion. This is how we can describe the operating principle of the shaping operation. Make sense? The next operation is the milling operation. Milling also one of the fundamental and important machines that used in the industry, especially that depend on the machining operation. In the milling process, it is the process of making surfaces, very similar to the shaping process. Also, the shaping is used for making surfaces by the reciprocal movement of tool, but here using a rotating cutter. So the tool in the milling operation is known as it is named cutter. So what is the cutter? This is the name of the tool that is used in the, in the milling operation. With multiple teeth, this cutter has multiple teeth. It is not just one teeth. As shown here, it has multiple edges, multiple teeth. It's known as multiple edge cutting tool. Again, it's the work piece bar that can keep on rotating. And as it rotates and moves, it's going to remove a chip. These things that fly, these are the chips. As you can see, the tool, it rotates very fast. So that's why you barely can see the tooth of this tool, but and as it rotates, it removes from the metal surface in order to end up with a certain feature or a shape over this metal bar surface. Here, the same animation, this is end mill, which is the cutter that is used for the milling operation. This end mill or this cutter, as it rotates, it removes the chip. As you can see the chip, these things, these are the chips that are removed up on the rotation of the cutter itself. This is also another form of the cutter that also used as for making the surface very smooth, very flat. This is also one of the forms of the milling operation. So mainly the milling operation is used for making surfaces using a rotating cutter, a rotating tool named cutter with multiple teeth against the work piece bar surface in order to end up with a pure surface or a clean surface as in that way, in this case. Make sense? So this is the objective of the machine. Also, we knew the name of the tool. How about the name of the machine? In the milling operation, or the name of the machine is known as milling machine. So what is the name of the machine? In the shaping operation is known as shaper. In the drilling known as drilling press machine. In the turning is known as lathe machine, but in the milling operation is known as milling machine. So in the milling operation, what is the name of the machine? It is milling machine, very simple. But in the milling operation, we do have two different types of machines, and we do have two different approaches of milling operations. We do have either horizontal milling machine or vertical milling machine. So the machines could be either horizontal or vertical. So we have vertical milling machine and horizontal milling machine. The horizontal milling machine is used for making something that we call as a slab milling or plane milling. So the plane milling, it is a milling approach. In this approach, the axis of rotation of the work of the tool. So this is the tool, this is the cutter. As you can see in the plane milling, the cutter rotates in such a way that the axis of rotation of the cutter it is parallel to the work piece surface. This is the work piece surface. Both are parallel. This is the plane milling and it is done by horizontal milling machine. But the face milling, the difference is in the face milling, the end mill or this is the tool, this is the cutter. The axis of rotation of the cutter, the cutter rotates vertical. 
and its axis of rotation, it is vertical, that is perpendicular. There is a 90 degree here between the axis of rotation of the, tool, uh, of the tool and the surface of the work part. This is what gives the face milling and it should be done by a vertical milling machine. So the face milling is done by a vertical milling machine. Is it possible to make a face milling using horizontal milling machine? No. The vertical milling machine is used only for making face milling. But the plane milling, it should be done but only by a horizontal milling machine. Make sense? So that's why we have two machines to achieve the two approaches of milling. We have two methods of millings, of milling operations. We have plane milling, in which that the axis of rotation of the cutter it is parallel to the work B surface. We have the other approach of the other milling uh, operation. It is not uh, uh, it is approach of milling or method of milling known as face milling, in which the axis of rotation of the tool it is perpendicular to the work B surface. Make sense? So the question is how the what is the operating principle? So now we know the name of the cutter, the tool, it is cutter. The name of the machine would have two machines, either horizontal milling machine or vertical milling machine. We knew the objective of this milling operation that is used for making surfaces by using rotating multiple cutter to multiple teeth cutter against the work piece surface. How about the operating principle? How the cutting motion is done, how the feed motion is done within the milling operation. In the milling operation, the cutting motion is done by the rotation of the tool. Very similar to the drilling operation. In the drilling operation, the rotation of the twisted drill, this is the cutting motion. The same thing here. In the milling operation, as long as these tools are rotating, so this rotation, this is the cutting motion. So the rotation of the tool, this is the cutting motion. How about the feed motion? The feed motion, it could be done in many of the cases using the tool, like as you can see, as the tool moves. Not, here I'm not talking about the rotation. I'm talking about the movement of the tool in a curve, like in this case, or the movement of the tool over a line, or the movement of, of the tool over any direction. So this movement of the tool, this is the feed motion. In some machines, the feed motion can, could be done by moving the tool themselves. In some other machines, we, can, we could move the base, we could move the table over which the workpiece is fixed, or we could perform the feed motion by moving the work part itself. But anyway, to easy understand how the feed motion is done in the milling operation, just observe this movement. This translational motion of the tool, this is known as the feed motion. How it is done by using this twisted drill. I'm sorry, by the cutter. So the cutting motion is performed in the milling operation by the rotation of the cutter, but the movement of the cutter or the tool, this is the feed motion. That in order to finish the surface, you have to keep in feeding. So this is the feed motion. So this is for the operating principle. Now let us compare between the horizontal milling machine and the vertical milling machine. As I mentioned, this is a typical example of a horizontal milling machine. Uh, machine. As you can see, this part here is known as the table. Over this table we are going to fix, it has some tools and methods of fixing the two work part over the table. We are going to mount in or fix the work part over the table. Then we are going to fix the tool, the cutter itself, over the arbor. This is known as the arbor of the, this, this thing like a spindle that rotates that is already fixed. So the gears and everything of the, of the milling machine, this horizontal milling machine, already inside this column thing are fixed here that gives rotation to this arbor that rotates. And once we fix the cutter over, this arbor is going to rotate. So as you can see, the arbor is horizontal parallel to the work piece surface or parallel to the table. So that's why we got the name as, this is known as the horizontal milling machine. It is mainly used in the plane milling approach or method of milling in which, as I mentioned, the axis of rotation of the tool or the cutter it should be parallel to the work piece surface. Make sense? But in addition to the horizontal milling with a vertical milling machine, in which that the spindle, now it is named as a spindle, the spindle or the axis of rotation of the spindle, it is vertical, standing vertical. And again, this is the table, 
This is the table that has methods, the same thing, like the horizontal meaning machine. Methods of fixing and mounting the tool, the work part, will be fixed over the table. And we can have here this spindle that is vertical, that rotates about its axis, which should be vertical in that case. And once we fix the tool, this tool, this is the end mill, or is known as end mill, or cutter in general. This cutter will be fixed into the spindle that rotates and this is gonna give the axis of rotation of the cutter or this end mill, it is perpendicular to the workpiece surface and this is the concept or the approach, the second approach of milling, which is the face milling, that it should be done by the vertical milling machine. Make sense? So this is for the milling operation to know about it and to know the difference between the vertical milling, horizontal milling, and the difference between plane milling and face milling. Make sense? The last operation that we have here that could be grouped as machining operation is the grinding process. Grinding process, it do lots of things. The main objective of the grinding process it is used for smoothing surfaces, like making any surface that is rough, that is have lots of defects and asperities, make this surface very clean, very smooth. This is known as the grinding operation. So it is the process of making smooth surfaces. This is the main objective by rotating a grinding wheel. So it uses a grinding wheel. This is the name of the tool. This is the tool. The grinding wheel, this is the tool. But the tool in the milling operation is known as cutter. In the twisted and the drilling operation is known as the twisted drill. In the, uh, in the lathe machine or the turning operation is known as single point cutting tool or point tool. And the shaper it is cutting tool. In the in the grinding operation is known as a grinding wheel. We are using a wheel like this one. So all of this, this is a grinding, this is like handy grinding that you can do over grinding or cutting. In some cases, we could use this grinder even for cutting. But as I mentioned, this is the main objective of the grinding operation of making smooth surfaces by using rotating grinding wheel. The grinding wheel should be rotating as shown in this animation. And this guy is using to sharpen the edge, the tool. One of the things we could use these grinding wheels for resharpening knives, for resharpening tools, for resharpening edges of any tool, whatever it is. Make sense? But also we can use it for uh, making surfaces smooth, and this is the main objective of the grinding operation. As I mentioned, again, it's the workpiece surface. This is the basic idea of the grinding operation. But as I mentioned, we can use it for smoothing surfaces, for sharpening tools, for so many other things. We can even using it for cutting metals into two pieces using this thing. Even we can use it for cutting materials. This is also one of the objectives or functions of the grinding operation. Similar to the Milling operation, we do have two machines. We do have horizontal grinding machine and we do have vertical grinding machine. Like since like the milling, we do have horizontal milling machine and we do have vertical milling machine. Here we do have also horizontal and vertical grinding machine. So this is the name of the tool is known as the grinding wheel. This is a typical grinding wheel, a typical form. This grinding wheel, it is made of two special materials. One well, material is known as the binding material and it includes inside it some small grits. These grits are very strong material, very small particles that are going to use to remove small pieces of the surface of the material with the aim of making this surface very small. So this grinding wheel it is a special thing. So as you can see, it, it, if you had a chance to look or to see a grinding wheel, and this is the thing that you're gonna see also in the lab, you're gonna find that the grinding wheel surface it is very rough. Because of what? Because of these small grits and particles that already random distributed inside the grid to give it the ability to remove small pieces of the material surface with the aim of making this surface small. So this grinding wheel, when it rotates, this gives the cutting motion. Here we are going to talk about the operating principle, how the cutting motion is done, and the feed motion is done by the grinding operation. In the grinding operation, the rotation of the grinding wheel, this is the cutting motion. How about the feed motion? The feed motion, it could be done by the grinding wheel itself that you're gonna move the grinding wheel parallel to the workpiece surface, 
Or the other option, you could move the workpiece itself. Like you're gonna keep on moving. So the grinding wheel rotates in place. This is the cutting motion. While in the meanwhile, the workpiece is gonna keep on moving in that way, in this direction, to bring more material in front of the grinding wheel to be ground, to be ground and to end up with a smooth surface. This is the basic idea and the operating pressure. So this movement of the work piece horizontal or parallel to the axis of rotation of the grinding wheel, this is known as the feed motion. So this transverse motion, this is the feed motion, how it would be achieved in the grinding operation. So this is the operating principle again, the rotation of the grinding wheel. This is the cutting motion and the movement in the transverse direction of the work piece in the transverse direction, this gives the feed motion of the grinding within the grinding operation. And again, we could have a horizontal grinding machine or a vertical grinding machine. This is a typical example of a horizontal grinding machine. As you can see, the axis of rotation in the horizontal grinding machine will be parallel to the axis of the workpiece surface, very similar to the horizontal milling machine. But in the vertical grinding machine, the axis of rotation of the grinding wheel will be perpendicular to the surface of the work piece, perpendicular to the table with the aim of uh, making the axis of rotation of the grinding wheel perpendicular to the work piece surface, very similar to the vertical milling machine. Make sense? So this is again the machining operation, the grinding operation, and by the grinding operation, we should be finished of the all the machining operation and would should be finished of all the most common types of machining, metal forming and shaping operation. We have discussed over these two videos so far, the shaping operation as casting and, mid and welding. We discussed the metal forming operation, rolling, extrusion, forging, drawing, sheet metal working, and we discussed the different types of the machining operation. Again, these are the most common types of these three different categories of manufacturing processes. But in addition to these types, there are lots of other manufacturing processes that I didn't mention here in these two videos, but definitely they could also be used for making products and we are using them a lot in the industry. But again, these are the common things and the fundamental manufacturing processes that have been covered over these two videos. Make sense? The last thing that I'd like to mention here is give you an example how we basically plan when we are working as engineer, whatever you are, mechanical engineer or industrial engineer, in any way you are a manufacturing engineer and you have been given a task, this task, for example, you are required to make a certain product from a raw material. Like, for example, let us, let us see how we could make a gear. As we discussed over this class, in the mechanical design part, we said that the gears is one of the essential mechanical components. So how these gears are made, how we can make a gear. We have to do design calculation for the gear, then we're gonna bring the gear to manufacturing the gear. How we can bring this gear into real reality, how we can make it. Which one of the manufacturing processes that we have covered so far, could be used for making this gear. Is it only one manufacturing process or is it like a group of manufacturing processes, like set of manufacturing processes that we have to follow and use in order to make this gear? So it is not one single manufacturing process, but instead it is a set of procedures. It is a procedure that we have to follow that includes or involves lots of manufacturing method that it should be done one after the other one, like in a procedure. We have to follow fixed procedure in order to make the gear. We have to perform the so many manufacturing processes in an order, in a specific order, in order to end up or to achieve or to make this gear. These are the responsibilities. Your responsibilities as a manufacturing engineer is to put the plan, is to plan how we can do manufacturing for this mechanical component like the gear. In order to make the gear, 
how we are going to make it, what are the different manufacturing processes that should be used, which machines in your workshop or in your factory or industry that you are going to use, which one that should be done first, which should be done second, which should be done third, and so on, until you're gonna end up with the gear. This is known as process planning. Process planning, this is some of the things that you are going to study, whatever you are as a mechanical engineer or industrial engineer. Even process planning, it is more related to the industrial engineering, but also there are some of the courses that offered by the mechanical engineering that you can learn and know how you can do process planning for any, to manufacture any mechanical component like the gear, for example. Make sense? All right, so to explain to you how this gear making, the procedure, how it is done, and what are the different manufacturing processes that is going to be used for making this gear, I'm going to let you with this very comprehensive video that explains the gear making. Or a car's transmission, you've seen a system of gears. A gear is a wheel with teeth that meshes with the teeth of another gear to transmit power on a continuous basis. Combining gears of different diameters affects rotation speed and force. This factory makes gears that go into transmissions for industrial machines. Production begins with a large round bar of high-grade steel which contains a certain amount of carbon to make it even stronger. Yeah, so this is the first process in the gear making that we have to bring. Initially, we come with the design and we know exactly what should be the diameter of the gear because any gear, it should be circular with, with a certain diameter. And depending on this diameter and the material type, we're going to bring a raw material. So this is the raw material. This bar comes very long, even if it is longer than this, but it seems that they have cut lots of things from this bar so it became shorter but anyway it comes very long made of a certain material this is the raw material they can't even export this material from other countries anyway then they are using this sewing machine so they are gonna sew this piece gonna slice one cylindrical piece that depend on the thickness of the gear itself out of this bar out of this uh, raw material this is the first step an automated bandsaw slices off a piece that's the right thickness for the size of gear they're making. This piece is called a gear blend. So the question is, can we classify this sewing process as a machining operation? Yes. Why it is classified as a machining operation? We didn't mention that sewing it is one of the machining operation. No, it is. But it is not that common, so that's why I didn't mention it in this in the, over the slides. But definitely it is one of the machining operation. Why? Because as you can see, it involves the formation of a chip. And this very small things. This piece is called a gear blend. These things on the top, these are the chips that is going to form because of the sewing process. So it is one of the machining operation. And as I mentioned, this is a step one that we have to slice a piece cylindrical piece out of this bar using this sewing machine and, uh, depending on the width and the thickness of the gear itself. This piece is called a gear blend. Definitely, as you can see, this is a turning operation. This is the lathe machine. This thing that gives rotation to the workpiece, this is the spindle, and this is the, in the beginning of this part here, as you can see, do you see this thing? This is like a clamping piece. There is one clamp here, another clamp, and there is a third that is not shown. It is, should be done. So this is known as three jaw shock. So this shock, it is used for fixing the work piece, this blank of the gear over this bindle that is going to rotate very fast. Then we are going to bring the tool in order to cut a chip out of this thing, this operation is known as the turning operation and this is the second step. The objective of this turning operation is to try to bring this slice 
this cylindrical slice into a very close shape into the final shape of the gear, but definitely without the tooth, the teeth of the gear itself. So this is this is the second they mount the manufacturing of process. Control blade. As it spins, a turret carrying a series of so as you can see, this little small thing, and it almost cuts with a point, very sharp point that cuts into the workpiece. This is the cutting tool that is already fixed over the tool post of the machine and it moves. So the rotation, as we discussed, this is the turning operation, the rotation of the workpiece, this is the cutting motion and the movement of the tool, this is the feed motion. Of carbide tools moves in. One tool after another takes its turn machining the blank to a specific shape. So again, these things that are flying are rejected. Uh, these things, these are the chip. As you can see, there is a reduction in the volume. So that's why this also is classified. A shower of coolant prevents overheating when the jumbo drill has its turn. It bores a hole right through the middle of the... So this is also another type, as I mentioned, the turning operation. It is not just as I represented over the slide. We do have so many different things that we can do over the turning operation or the laser machine. One of the things is the axial drop drilling. So we are opening an axial hole over the laser machine itself. Blank. The last tool carves a groove on the front of the blade. This final bit of metal removal lessens the gear's weight. Now the blade goes into a computer-controlled mill. The mill drills holes through... So this is a milling machine. This is the mill. This is a drilling machine. I'm sorry. This is the milling machine that uses in the mill that rotates. So this is another manufacturing process. So it is a procedure, as you can see, it is not just one manufacturing procedure that is going to be used for making a product and that's it. No, it is a, a set of manufacturing processes that should be done one by one, step by step. So we have finished, we slice the piece, we went, we use the turning operation, we have finished the turning, the turning operation, then now we are doing the milling in order to open these holes. We can open this hole using the twisted drill, or even we can use the end mill in that case for open. Which lubrication will flow when the gear is operating. Why we are using end mill here or milling operation? Because these holes are not open. It, it is not through hole, it is blind hole, and it should be with a certain feature that it should require in that case using the end mill. The end that rotates very fast. These holes also lighten the gear's weight. So it rotates very fast and penetrates inside the workpiece in order to open these. When the blade comes off the mill, they stamp it with the company name and part number. Now for the gear's teeth. So this thing, this is the spline. If you remember, as we discussed over the mechanical components parts, we said that there are a spline. The spline, these are the shafts that has some special feature that allow for the easy fixing of other components to their surfaces, right? So as you can see, this is known as a slotting machine. The slotting machine, as we discussed, we do have shapers, we do have planers, we do have slotters. So the slotters or the slotting machine, it is used for making, it works with the same concept as the shaping operation. As you can see, this is the tool, which is a special tool. A machine called a vertical, the reciprocating motion. So this type of motion, this type of motion, it is reciprocating motion, moved up and down, so it repeats. So it is the same concept as the shaping operation, and it is mainly used for making these slots. As you can see, this is the quick return mechanism, very similar to the quick return mechanism, and it keeps it moving up and down in order to open these slots. And this thing, oil thing, it is added in order to cool down the tool and keep the tool working perfect. So this is known as the coolant that it should be done using in many of the manufacturing operations. Make sense? In the center hole with its titanium coated cutter. 
The machine's other components keep the cutter's movement correctly timed. The number of teeth and tube size vary from gear to gear, so for each model, the factory has to fit the gear shaper with a specific cutter. Now for the outside gear teeth, the computer-controlled machine. So this is another manufacturing process that I didn't explain this known as the hobbing machine or the hobbing process. It is, we can do the same thing, this hobbing operation or process is used, it works almost is the same concept as the milling operation that is used in forming and shaping and cutting the teeth, the external teeth of the gear. So this is known as the hobbing machine or the hobbing operation. I didn't explain it, but as I said, it is very commonly used for the gear making. We can even use the conventional milling operation for making the for, for shaping and machining the tooth, the teeth of the of the gear, the external teeth. We can use the milling operation or we can use the hobbing operation or the hobbing machine. But the common thing in this factor that they are depending over the hobbing machine because it is much more easy to form the tooth using this machine. Make sense? So this is another manufacturing process that comes after the slotting, the lathe machine, the uh, uh, the, uh, the milling and so on. The cuts then is called the gear hopper. The gear turns against it as it cuts. If the hopper would cut the full depth of the teeth in one shot, the cutter would chip. So the gear keeps turning around and around again as the hopper cuts a bit more with each pass until the teeth are the right depth. Then the gear undergoes a computerized inspection. A probe scans the entire surface, including every tooth, it sends data to a computer which then analyzes the dimensions and ensures they meet the engineering specifications. Gears that pass this quality control inspection go into a furnace for heat treatment. This strengthens the steel. When the furnace reaches a certain temperature, they inject carbon inside. The gears absorb it, and the steel strengthens even further. A soaking in oil afterward hardens the metal. Heat treatment, however, distorts steel somewhat, so each gear now goes to a computer-controlled grinder. It restores them to very precise specifications for bearings to fit properly. This factory manufactures gears in various sizes, and not only in steel, it also... So as he mentioned, the last step is that we have to go to the grinder machine, the grinding operation, in order to make the surface smooth and perfect as required, as already he mentioned over this video. So with, this is like a summary of the general procedure that we have to follow in order to make a gear that we start by a raw material which it should be like a very long bar which is made of uh, that, that that this bar is made of the same material of the gear that we are planning to make this gear from then the step one is to slice a slender from the long bar using a saw machine then turning then we're gonna move to the turning operation if you record the video the slender to gear to the gear dameter using a lathe machine or to approach the gear into the exact or very close to the shape and the dimensions of the gear that we would like to form then step three is to machine the tooth or the teeth of the gear using a milling machine or the hobbing machine as I mentioned. Then we are going to finish the gear to the net dimensions using a lathe machine. Again, also we can use the grinding operation to finish the surfaces, make the surfaces smooth. This is the general procedure in general, how we are going to use it for making the gears. But as, as mentioned or shown in the video, we can add even the slotting operation in order to open the slots or the keyways. We can use the milling operation to open the holes within the gear and get that would have a bigger gear. Also, we can use the heat treatment if we have to do some heat treatments to this gear. So all of these are different manufacturing operations. This example indicates that manufacturing it is a procedure. 
and we have to plan for it in order to make a product that is not just one manufacturing process. It is a step or a procedure of manufacturing that we're gonna use lots of manufacturing processes and this gear making is a, a good example to explain to you how we can make or for or use this manufacturing process to make a gear. Make sense? So that's it for the manufacturing part. Again, the objective was to understand what does it mean manufacturing, what are the common types of manufacturing operation, their operating principle, their machines, their concepts, and to compare between them. But again, these different manufacturing processes will be explained to you with more details over the other, other another course, which is the manufacturing processes definitely and the process planning for the uh, industrial engineers. Make sense? So that's it for this part and thank you so much and see you in another video.